Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. We're at that part of the build phase now where it's a probably a, a love-hate part for me. I love it because this house is getting close to the end. I can really see this house becoming a home. I also hate it because we're about 500 little things that have to get done to finish this house up. Example, we have to finish the tile. We have to grab the tile. We have to go to the floor, tile that, put grout on there, install the vanities, install the trim, install the lights, install the fan, install the heater. So just about 25 different things before you can even finish one room. So it's a little overwhelming, but to keep myself from pulling my hair out and going crazy, or even crazier than I already am going, I have a nice long list I, I wrote down so I can finish one thing, check off the list and move on to the next one. But we just have a whole ton of ton of stuff to do. Lots and lots of little things. So I think we're gonna go ahead and get to the uh, door casing, get that painted, get the doors painted, and we'll run the baseboard. And then from there, I'll go back to my list and uh, see what other things I want to get accomplished. So let's go ahead and get to work. All right, so this is the paint that we picked for the house. This is called a, uh, a scuff defense. It's kind of just a, uh, a thicker paint there that's better for scuffs and cleaning, uh, such as uh, the doors and trim, things like that that we're going to be using on. So it's, that's a nice paint there. And this one, the uh, color, if you're wondering, this is a Sherwin Williams color. It's called the Mindful Gray. It's a really nice color. It's a, a little bit darker than the uh, wall paint. So I think it's gonna look real nice when we get this on the doors and trim. And you saw that on the last video on the baseboard, so you kind of know what color it is. So got the paint, gonna get my roller and go to work. So all these doors, they've gotten about uh, two coats, some of them three. I keep going back after they dry, find these little white spots like that. But with the doors, if I go and just touch up a little white spot, spot like that, then it's going to dry and that's going to stick out because it's going to be a different, different sheen. It's going to be a little more shiny. So find a little white spot on the door, I have to go back and repaint the entire door. But that's okay, I guess. So all the doors will have probably about three coats of paint on them. Much, much, much later. Several months later. Two thousand years later. All right, well, got all the doors and trim uh, painted, and I'm sure there's a little bit more to do, but I don't think I can mentally do any more painting today. So came to my list here, uh, things to do, and chose off there. I think the next uh, smart thing to do is move on to doing the uh, baseboard, getting that installed as much as I can, and then I'll probably go on to uh, window sills and see what I can do for there, and then back to the list and see what else I can get done. So for now, it's gonna get the air compressor uh, fired up my saw taken outside and move on to baseboard and back here in the master bedroom see here i took a little bit of time to put on this uh, baseboard here in this room here and since this is uh, just a uh, craftsman style uh, baseboard it's a pretty simple thing to put in uh, nothing really technical just uh, measure cut install and repeat we'll come back with some caulk later and film the nails and put a little bit on top of the baseboard as you see here we might get a little bit of a uh, little gap in there but that's okay caulk will fix that one up and only thing i recommend on doing these on these uh, edges on baseboard or any baseboard is when you have your two edges uh coming together to extend your piece of baseboard you don't want to have them butt together at 90 degrees you will go ahead and cut them at a 45 degree like this so they can overlap and then you get a nice clean uh seam right there
Yeah, I move it over here to the inside corners. Luckily, all my rooms are pretty square, so uh, my corners, they line up real nice. Little seam in there, fill that with some caulk and the nail holes, and that'll disappear there. Um, outside corners, I usually take a little bit of extra time to make sure that these are lined up and got a nice clean uh, line there and no gaps because if you put a little caulk on the outside there, it kind of really sticks out. So if, if it needs to go in or out, sometimes I just do a little like wood shim, put it on the bottom underneath there to bring it in or out. And then uh, when I nail these two together, get a nice clean edge there. So that's my little tip for that one. There's a lot of other really good uh, videos on putting in baseboard, but since it's such simple stuff, it goes pretty quick. But anyways, rooms are done. I'm gonna move out here to the kitchen and get this installed. And hopefully out here to this room. Once I move all my stuff here, then I'll put the baseboard along the edges there. Kind of got it started along there. And then next I will move along that wall there. So that was pretty quick. Got the baseboard here in the kitchen and down the little hallway here, hallway and into the little pantry here. This part is done. I just have two little strips to do. Bring it out here to the other room. So the next little piece I have to do is, is go from that cabinet there out to here, but I wasn't sure how far it has to go because for here, this little cutout is the, uh, the wood stove that's gonna go in there. Uh, I will cut out the floor there so we can put tile down for the stove to sit on top of. And then up the sides will be uh, some stone to match the outside. But I know how far to bring my baseboard, so I put this here, got that all lined up, so I know my baseboard will go to there. I can end it there. And do the same thing over there. If you can see it, there's a line there. And bring my baseboard to there, and that should be it. Uh, next thing after that is just the bathrooms, but I have to get on the tile first before I can do the baseboard there. And see outside, I already have the tile saw all set up so we can do the floors in the bathroom. Yeah, trying to make some real good progress this week. It is time to get back to work. And next thing to do is I wanna go ahead and put down the rest of the tile here. The other guy, he got it halfway uh, done. He put this down and he's not here right now. So it's gonna be up to me to put the rest of the tile down. And I really wanna get this done so I can grout it and then I can move in the vanity and do the baseboard and move on the uh, the door trim. So do that part and then uh, so wait for some metal that will go along the edges there so we can finish up the tile on the bathtub there. But that can be done after the floor is in and I really want to get this floor in. And the other guy, he is the uh, tile expert. I'm not the expert, but I know how to do tile. So this won't be a how-to video on this one. It's going to just be a watch me do a video. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get to work. And it is the next day here. Went ahead and finished up all the tile for this uh, bathroom here yesterday, as you saw. And it's been drying overnight. I'm pretty sure I can go ahead and, and uh, walk on it now and step on it. But I'll still go ahead and give it just another day to dry out because there's no reason to be in here today. And this one is done. So now it's time to go to the other bathroom and get started on the floor for that one. And here are in the other bathroom, it's the master, master bathroom. This is gonna be the exact same thing. It's the exact same layout, the same space in here. Well, this one has a lot more trash in it. So I'll get this cleaned up and I'll get the tile saw out and the thin set mixed up and start on this bathroom here. 
So before I start the tile, I want to warm up a little bit outside because uh, it's still freezing out there and I don't want the water in the tile saw to freeze up and have any issues there. So went ahead here, came into the pantry and one of my projects was to get this uh, crawl space help cover uh, covered up again. So I put the, the LVP floor back down. I glued it down and I put some brad nails in there just to keep it down for now. Went ahead and cut this little little hole out there for this hinge. So that's nice and flush now with the floor. I can trip on that. And it makes it a real easy thing to lift up the floor, go into the crawl space. Instead of sticking little screwdrivers in there or something, just got that nice little latch there. So that's done. And I think it's actually warm enough to go outside and start the tile. And there you go. So you saw I went ahead and I took off all the little uh, tile spacers. So the black spacers that break off, those go into the trash. And the red uh, spin on tops, those can be reused. Those go back in the box. I can use those for the next time. And I got the utility knife and cleaned out all the little uh, uh, lines there between the tiles. And got that vacuumed up and cleaned everything off with a sponge. Got everything looking nice. And now I have my grout here. I have a little bit of extra time this uh, today. so. I'm gonna go ahead and get this grout put in. Uh, this will only take about 10 minutes to do such a small uh, uh, floor here. So I will see you in just a second. And about five minutes later, this bathroom floor is done. Put all the grout down. It's a pretty simple and easy process to do. It's all there. I'm gonna go outside, clean up my tools and I need to wait about 10 minutes. I'll come back with a bucket of clean water and a sponge. I'll get all this extra grout cleaned off and the film cleaned off. And it's gonna be looking really nice. And there we go. Grout is done. Got my sponge, clean everything off. Doesn't have to be a very wet sponge, just kind of a damp one. And just kind of uh, knocks down the edges a little bit on the grout and get all that white film cleaned up. And once it finally dries completely, there'll be a little bit of white film left, but I'll come back with like a microfiber towel and I'll clean it off real easy. 
and it's gonna be nice and shiny and done. All right, guys. Well, I think that's gonna do it for this video. It doesn't seem like much got done, but got a whole bunch of stuff done actually. Uh, that's just kind of the point of the build that we're at right now. It is towards the end. It's doing all these little tiny things. It doesn't look like anything's being done, but in the big in the big picture, everything's actually getting done. I just have to keep going to my to do list and just checking off one little thing at a time. And before I know it, the list is gonna be done. The house is gonna be done. And we can stand back and look at this really great home that we built. But again, guys, thank you so much for watching the videos and all your comments and support. And if you like these kind of videos, be sure to subscribe because we have a new one every single weekend. So I will see you right back here next weekend on the job site. Thanks for watching. This is our time. You already know I ain't gotta tell them why. Get your hands to the sky. Get your hands to the sky. Yeah. Ain't no glory for the faint of heart. We all stars, win or lose, we don't play the part. And when the going getting tough, I get to going hard. You bring your best and you know I'ma tear them apart.